On May 29, 2014, Chicago would see another casualty become an addition to the growing statistic plaguing the community. That afternoon, reports state there was a party at 5722 South LaSalle Street, a two-story house divided into three apartments, situated a couple of blocks east of Interstate 94 and three miles southwest of the Museum of Science and Industry, where a 19-year-old Malcolm Stuckey worked. Malcolm Stuckey was scheduled to be present at the party, but before his arrival, there was already a certain type of energy in the party that reeked of potential gang rivalry. The mother who was throwing the birthday party for her son told officers that she was at work and returned home around 5.15 p.m. ready to begin cooking for the party. However, once there, she observed her son with some people on her front porch. Approaching, she noticed someone who caught her attention, a Black Disciple gang member by the name of Davon Bennett, aka Chicago rapper King Von. He was accompanied by a heavy-set female, as per her descriptions. She noticed King Von looked at some persons in a certain way, which she said prompted her to approach, telling him, don't start no mess in my house, meaning she didn't want King Von to gangbang at her house. She was aware King Von was an opposing gang member to other persons on the porch, which could be a recipe for disaster. But King Von responded in reassurance, telling her, I'm not on that. While she returned inside to cook, King Von would leave, but soon it would become apparent his decision wasn't one of peace, but one foreshadowing a tragedy upon his return. As King Von left, his associate, Michael Wade, AKA Big Mike, would receive a call. According to later reports, in a police interview, Big Mike would state that the persons on the call informed him that King Von needed him as muscle for backup. Big Mike stated he then spoke with King Von, who relayed to him there were other males present at the gathering, giving him hard looks and whispers amongst themselves. King Von would then tell Big Mike he wanted to go back to the party with him as backup. Wade, aka Big Mike, would inform officers that 10 minutes after the call, he was picked up by a female driver in her grandfather's two-door silver Oldsmobile Alero. Malcolm, on his way to the party, had no idea all of this was being put into play and his life would soon be in danger. Big Mike proceeded to get into the front passenger seat with Dave Vaughn, aka King Vaughn, behind him in the back seat. They began discussing what happened at the party and that's when Big Mike stated King Vaughn asked him if he was decent, inquiring if he was armed with the handgun. Big Mike would respond with confirmation that he was armed with 15 to 16 rounds with a Glock 40 cal semi-automatic pistol. King Von would then also show him the handgun he was carrying. They would proceed en route by means of the block west of the party, next to the expressway before parking. At that point, Big Mike phoned an associate at the party, inquiring into the whereabouts of the individuals they were after. According to his recollection, the persons would tell him to not let them come as their targets had a handgun. Undeterred, King Von would respond that it was okay because they had two guns. Big Mike would end the call, and both him and King Von exited the vehicle to carry out their plan. With King Von leading and Big Mike following, they made their way through a vacant lot towards the Sal before cutting through a gangway. Their intent was on catching their rivals, so much so that reports state that they weren't even concerned with concealing their faces. Somewhere during this time, King Von would call someone at the party, indicating to them he was returning but the person would tell him not to come because there were kids playing in the front. King Von would respond telling him he was coming and instructed him to take the kids inside. By the time he went to warn everyone in front, it was too late. King Von was already nearing his targets. Big Mike would inform officers that as they got to the end of the gangway, he observed a black male with long dreadlocks wearing an orange shirt standing at the mouth of the gangway. They would make eye contact, prompting the person in the orange shirt to turn and began fleeing. King Von would begin pursuit after him to the front of the house before shots began firing. Malcolm Stuckey, who had just arrived at the party with Bennett, aka King Von, and Michael Wade, aka Big Mike, parked and made their way to the party, stepped outside to the sidewalk to smoke a cigar. He intended to go play basketball before returning to eat the food prepared, but the timing was unfortunate, perfectly matched to when King Von chased his rival with dreadlocks to the front and began firing. The rivals were firing back while running and Big Mike 
stated that by the time he got to the front of the house, a victim, Malcolm Stuckey, was face down on the grass between the sidewalk and the street, bleeding out. In the heat of the matter, there was no time to even worry about Malcolm Stuckey, as bullets were still flying. Big Mike would observe King Vaughn shooting at another guy while yelling, why are you running? Big Mike then joined in, brandishing his firearm and firing 15 to 16 rounds at one of the targets who was running north, hitting his target, causing them to stumble but not fall. Luckily for them, Big Mike's gun was empty, so he turned and ran back through the gangway from which they originally came. Following behind was King Vaughn before running two houses over and firing two more shots into a vacant lot at one of their rivals laying in the lot. The person in the car was bleeding from the mouth. He was shot in the face and suffered a broken jaw, while the other target suffered a leg shot. With the damage done, Big Mike and King Vaughn made their escape in the awaiting vehicle, giving Big Mike the chance to also discard of his firearm in Lake Michigan as documented in his later statements to the cops. Malcolm Stuckey was succumbed to his wounds at the crime scene, recorded to have occurred around 6.09 p.m. An autopsy revealed his passing was due to multiple gunshot wounds. Documents show bullet trajectories entering his right ear, exiting his neck, and other shots entering his right upper thigh before fragmenting and partially exiting his right inner thigh. He was also wounded in his left upper inner thigh. The other two victims, who were shot by King Von and Big Mike, would survive the attack but with the wounds of the near demise experience. There were a 23-year-old man who suffered gunshot wounds to the mouth and leg and was taken to John H. Stroger Jr. Hospital of Cook County in serious condition, and a 24-year-old man who took himself to St. Bernard Hospital and Healthcare Center with a gunshot wound to the foot, as stated per police reports. They would inform officers of what happened, one stating that he was struck in his right leg by the gunfire, but he was still able to flee into the lot towards the alley. But then he saw Bennett, aka King Vaughn, at the entrance to the lot with the handgun pointed in his direction. He observed King Vaughn firing two more shots, striking him in the face, but he was able to flee where he later received treatment from medical personnel arriving at the scene. With their identity not hidden in the shootout, it didn't take long for Big Mike to be held. And with his information to the officers of the entire detail of the shooting, King Vaughn's arrest was soon after. They were both facing charges of first degree and two counts of attempted first degree. And with Big Mike promising to testify against King Vaughn, it seemed like an open and shut case and justice would be served for Malcolm Stuckey. As if enough evidence wasn't attained, the gun used to end Stuckey's life would be found after a street stop of a Lamron gang member. Further investigations led to the linking the gun, not only Malcolm Stuckey's passing, but to another Chicago shooting just days after. Cops were able to trace the gun back to a Natchez, Mississippi arms dealer by the name of Jonathan Smalley, who the weapon was purchased from just two months prior to Stuckey's assassination. It was one of 25 weapons that Smalley purchased at area gun stores over a two-year period and either delivered in person or sent through the mail to friends and relatives on Chicago's South Side, where Smalley was born and spent his childhood. Reporters state that on Wednesday, Smalley, 29, stood in a federal courtroom in Chicago and bowed his head as a judge sentenced him to nearly five and a half years in prison for trafficking the weapon to Chicago. It was time to face the music. Big Mike and King Vaughn were kept behind bars as the trial proceedings were organized to be on the way. King Vaughn would keep his fans updated, posting pictures and videos of him behind bars in good spirits. From June 2014 to December 2017, King Vaughn was facing trial with the possibility of his freedom being taken away looming over his head, but the unthinkable happened. While King Von continued to not cooperate and speak any details on the hit, his co-defendant Big Mike was already lined up to testify, but he would go back on that deal, causing the case to fall through and King Von being acquitted of all charges. King Von would walk free. However, there were grave repercussions for Big Mike reneging on his promise to testify. He was convicted of aggravated battery with the firearm for shooting Robinson and sentenced to 16 years, but acquitted of the hit on Stuckey, an aggravated battery of Carpenter. Marquise Carpenter and Timothy Robinson were revealed in court documents as the two other victims who were injured in the attack. Unfortunately for Big Mike, in March 2018, he also received an additional 12 years on a sentence for backing out of his deal to testify on his co-defendant King Von, bringing his total sentence to 28 years. Some sources online have updated information alleging that Big Mike appealed his conviction 
and had it reduced to the discharge of a firearm. If that is true, he could be home sooner than his original sentencing. King Von being back on the outside made a statement via song, releasing the track Beat That Body, featuring associate THF Zhu, who also beat his charge. He would later also apparently speak on the situation with Big Mike and Malcolm Stuckey on a feature song, What's Next, by Jizzle Bucks. On the track, King Von appears to imply that Malcolm wasn't the target, but was a witness to the shooting, and he was out on the sidewalk and had to be taken out due to the fact King Von recited the lyrics, a N-word told on me before. He got a longer sentence. A nigga told on me before he got a longer got sentence. A longer I think they gave him 2080 rather talk than listen. So it appears Malcolm Stuckey was at the wrong place at the wrong time. How sad. Reports state that Malcolm Stuckey had a bright future ahead of him. He was an honor roll student with no criminal record. Sadly, his dreams for the future came to a tragic end at just 19 years old. His family would lash out at King Von becoming one of Chicago's most polarizing rappers after being free and building a career rapping about his lifestyle. Associates of Malcolm Stuckey would release a song titled Malcolm's Song, where they expressed their grief over his passing while also seeking vengeance on those responsible for their loss. They would fail to directly intact their revenge, but Malcolm's associate made their feelings known when King Vaughn lost his life on November 6, 2020 in Atlanta. Another lost, another gone. More bodies drop, more families mourn. Rest in peace, Malcolm Stuckey.